Hi, I'm Mikey Sklar of Holy Scrap Hot Springs, and today I'm in my 1998 Beetle. It's a Volkswagen Beetle. It's a diesel. Um, we've had it for several years, and it's about 15 years old at this point. And um, we've had two problems with it. One is the fuel gauge is going to empty sometimes when we drive. So it still has plenty of fuel, but it's not reading right. And the other problem is it's not picking up enough on some hills. So rather than try to figure out exactly why, I'm going to go with one of the more common problems with this model, and that is to replace the fuel center unit. So it's got a new little resistance reader for the fuel bobber, and um, let me show you how you get into the car and replace this part. So I just lifted up the back seat of the Beetle, and uh, underneath we have our fuel tank. And you can see the top of the old sender unit here, and if you look carefully, I don't know how clear that is, but there's a part number, and the old part number is 1J0919183C. But anyone who's running bio and other heavier fuels tends to use the Canadian part as a replacement, so I just bought that, and it ends in an H. So instead of a C, it's an H. And this seems to be pretty popular in the biodiesel forums and some of the YouTube videos, so I'm going to go with what they're doing. So... Um, I wiped down the fuel tank a little bit. I had pulled out this uh, metal plate prior to that. It just had three screws, Phillips head. That's all I needed. And uh, we got clips. So uh, this is labeled, this blue one, as a return. This is the send to the sending the fuel to the vehicle. And um, we got a little electric connection, and we got a big, giant, rubberized screw gasket. So I'm going to kind of disconnect all that and drop in the new unit, and we'll see how it goes. Okay, I went ahead and uh, pulled each of the fuel connectors off using their little buttons and went ahead and pried up this little plastic thing just a little bit and this came right off and that's our electrical connection. Now we can start to remove the entire unit. Well, the fuel sender came right out as soon as I lifted it up. Uh, I just had to manage a gasket that it came with. But other than that, it came right out and I do see there's a little bit of debris on the bottom so I gotta go wipe that up. Um, and uh, other than that, the original one looked kind of okay. Yeah, I only saw a little bit of markings on it. Let's go take a look at that. So here's the original fuel sender from the vehicle. And you can see there's some gunk on the outside. There's some crap on the inside. So it probably could survive with just a wipe down, but I'm going to go ahead and replace it since it's a $30 part. If you look at the um, this little uh, these tiny little traces here, each of those help uh, with the fuel level gauge and um, you know different resistances for different uh, traces and uh, there's some crap on that. I bet just wiping that down would probably fix the fuel gauge. But anyway, since you're in here, I'm just going to replace it all. Okay, I had no trouble getting the gasket on, getting the new fuel sender back in here. Um, just make sure you get this uh, plastic ring back on too before you go ahead and hook up everything. I just went ahead and <laughs> hooked up everything and realized I forgot the black plastic ring, uh, rubber ring. Anyway, then uh, these just snap right in. These these connectors are actually really cool how well they work. This, this is the fuel sender. This, you just get this great click noise. Like that when it locks in. This is the return line, the blue one. And then here's your electrical, the two pair. It's keyed so you can only go on one way. You don't have to worry about uh, messing that up. That's it. Now we're should be good to go. Let's hope it starts, huh? All right, I'm in the driver's seat now. I got the uh, sender in. It went really smoothly. I don't think it even took me 20 minutes to do it. Uh, I want to show you the car starting up, and we can see uh, if the fuel gauge works. So, all right, here's the front dash here. I'll go ahead and uh, turn on the ignition. Oh, here's the key. And perfect. I had just... Uh, <laughs> Just uh, less than a quarter tank in here. I just got back from a long trip, and uh, that's perfect. It's registering just right. So, car started up. Looks good. So, to summarize, if you're having issues with your TDI and not performing as you're trying to go up hills, or you're feeling like the uh, fuel gauge is jumping all over the place, $30 replacement for a fuel sender seems like a pretty easy way to go to fix those issues. And uh, it sounds great and is uh, driving really well. So, this is the way to go.